Welcome to Gravity This Season Football. Today we have Adam Shelley here to help us out. And again, with the gravity football, kind of the nitty gritty of function, what we're gonna do is build on what Trisha taught you with the conditioning program and go into a little bit of specificity with regards to one aspect of football, blocking. So Adam's got a lot of uh, experience blocking. I think he was a fullback actually, so he was part-time blocker. So what we're going to address is, first of all, the three-point stance is going to be where we're going to be loaded. So if you get into your three-point stance, if you want to join me, Adam, he's got more experience, is first of all, you've got to address flexibility here. If you're in the preseason or if you're in the season, then you've got to look. Are you able to get enough ankle dorsiflexion? Are your hamstrings flexible enough to get you in position? Every play is going to start out of that position. Once you're down here, then the blockers typically, you're gonna go straight, you're gonna go left, or you're gonna go right. You're not gonna want that defender to know where you're headed. So it's gotta be a lot of, and you're, it's all reaction. So you're listening for the audible cue of the, of the quarterback, or if it's a loud uh, stadium, you gotta do no, no, what is it, no huddle, or whatever, you actually watch the ball move in the corner of your eye to get, to get moving. Okay, that's, your, that's our basic aspect is blocking. So there's flexibility, there's strength and power involved, as well as reaction time. So everything we do today is gonna to have a little bit of a reactive type of, I'm gonna give an audible cue for Adam to start his move or to differentiate the movement. The next thing we're gonna do is address some of those deficiencies. So for example, if he doesn't have the flexibility in the foot, and you can see it right at the foot, again, any of those lunge moves that you can do to look at how much dorsiflexion you're getting at the ankle, how much knee flexion, or are they real tight and all the way down here then, it, then they're not able to load. So you want to be able to preload those muscles to get into position, and you've got to have that stability, mobility, or most ability, as Gary Gray would call it, uh, efficiency. So first thing we're going to do with Adam is we're going to do a dynamic warm-up. And what, what he's going to do is work with the plyo rebounder, and I'm going to have him just kind of start off with some kind of basic chest press stuff. I'm going to start him off with two legs and just go back and forth, left and right, passing it back and forth. Now I'm going to kind of fast forward through the program so this webcast isn't an hour long, but I'm going to have him go right into single leg balance now, st staying on the right side, and he's going to listen for me to say switch and then switch because we want to get that reactive time mixed up. Switch. 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 So you can see he's, he's, got, to, he's got to react to that. His whole proprioceptive, proprioceptive, <laughs> proprioceptive system has to react and he can continuously move. I can wear him out here if I want to. He's getting a little lazy. I want to see him speed it up a little bit. Switch, switch, switch. Good, nice warm up. So you would continue with that. You might throw in a heavier ball. You might have him uh, close an eye or mess with him somehow. It's easy to do. Okay, next we're gonna go right into squats. Now you can use that rebounder for all types of sports specific, especially football when you get into one particular aspect for blocking our today or our focus today is to get off the line forward power and typically they're coming up with your arm so a lot of reaction here a lot of reaction from this point and you're going left right so you get all three planes again very important to remember when you're developing a sports specific program next thing we're going to do is come right down to a squat now a squat is a squat is a squat right but we're going to base this squat on reaction time and I'm gonna have him do just a couple regular bilateral squats. And what I kind of look for is, is one heel coming up off the, off the squat stand sooner than the other. If that's the case, then maybe we've got a, uh, an issue down at the subtalar joint or maybe the, the hips or the, uh, he's got, maybe, he's got a, maybe he's got tight butt syndrome, Adam. You got a little tight butt syndrome? I'm good. So he's doing nice pl uh, sagittal plane movement and I wanna get him more 3D oriented. So I'm gonna have him bring his feet together and just start with that skiing motion where he's just rolling over on his heel back and forth, back and forth, just to get a little bit more warm up at the hips, knees, ankles, everything three-dimensionally warmed up. And the, the whole time I'm watching, does he have a lot of mobility in the ankles? Does he have good hip mobility and good knee mobility? Looks good. Okay, now we want to get that reaction type, that reaction built in. So now I'm going to have him preload down into flexion, let's stick with that skiing because typically you're gonna be, there's gonna be a lateral force to the left or to the right. So I'll let him get a little bit of a wide stance. Come down into, maybe bring your feet down a little bit lower on that glide board. 
And what I'm going to do is give him an audible cue when to come up. And he thinks I'm going to do it right now. I might throw a couple. Oh, see, there he goes. Fell for it. So let's go. Hey! Stick it. So I want him to come up, explode, come down, and stick the landing. Hup. Good. Now I can add load too. Hup. Especially on that eccentric. Hup. Nice. Hup. Okay, let's add that skiing component now. So we're going to go left, right. So he's going to switch between each one. Hup. Good. Hup. Good. Hup. Good. One more. Hup. Very nice. Very nice. So you might build up a little bit of a sweat. You can add, you can stick with your regular repetitions, 12, 15, whatever kind of repetition range you're working in, or even get down into that real hardcore strength and power where you know, you're reducing your resistance because you're dealing with power. Typically 30, 40% has been uh, kind of shown in research to be the most beneficial 30, 40% of a one repetition max. So you might have to lower the intensity a little bit. So we're gonna go right into what I was talking about before is, you're, is there's typically going to be a lateral force. So you look at this frontal plane movement here as I shoot off to the left or I shoot off to the right. A lot of lateral movement. So we're going to put him in a sideline position and load up those adductors or abductors a little bit more. So as he comes down this position, I'm going to stand behind him so he can't see my, my cue. Is I'm going to have him preload again and bring his foot up real high. That way he loads the hip as he goes into the plyo. So I'm going to add a little bit of load so he doesn't shoot through the tower. And let's go, ready? Hup. Good. Hup. Excellent. Hup. Nice. Hup. There you go. One more. Hup. All right, let's go ahead and switch sides just to even them out. Now again, you're adding repetitions. You can choose a higher incline. I could stick a 25, 25 pound medicine ball in his chest. It's going to be an easy way for me to tweak the load a little bit. Good. Make, that, make sure that foot lands real high up on that glide board, ready, or the squat stand. Hup. There it is. Hup. Good. Good Good strength. Good power. There you go. So once he's out of this position, we'll finish off with some of those sprint starts because you got to remember when you're talking about that three-point stance that the object is not to come up, it's not to go perfectly forward, it's to shoot up at an angle. So you're shooting up here you're going up at about a 45 degree angle. So I really like the GTS here because it kind of preloads or prepositions them into that type of angle. Now Adam's hoping that his, he, he's wishing he had his cleats today because he might slip a little bit on this grass. But the same concept here is now he's right at about that angle where he's going to want to explode and attack that offensive lineman. And I'm going to add load just a little bit here. And we'll do that same thing, everything with reaction time and an audible cue. And I might psych him out a little bit, my little this action. Let's go, hut. Good, hut. So I don't think he needs my, my special load because he's got a grip in there. Hut. Hut. Good. Now, what we can do to tweak that a little bit is to have him work off this lower base. Now, if that's the, if that's the case, then he's got to make sure he lands on that just so he doesn't slip. Very nice. Now I might do some audible cueing as soon as he sees this ball move. Good, that's the quarterback. That's the, that's the center. <laughs> Good, excellent. So you can go back and forth, left, right. Make sure you cover both legs. The object there is to get the athlete from this preposition of flexion through the hips, through the knees, through the ankles, and have them explode out of that preloaded position. Next, we're going to cover upper body. So upper extremities, you're going to be shooting up that same angle. So we're going to do some overhead stuff and we're going to do some anterior stuff. What we're going to do is position them into a chest press position. And I like to bring my pulleys up nice and high. It gives me a real nice perpendicular force to work with. And Adam's versed in the GTS, so he's getting into a chest press position. And the thing I always watch for are the cables between his arm and his trunk. So he looks good. Nice. Now what I'm going to do here, same thing with that audible cueing, is just to get the athlete to where he's set, maybe a little preloaded, and I'm going to ask him to explode one arm of the X. So we're going to just go right arm first. You can bring your arms down, little elbows down, because typically you're going to be here, so your elbows are tucked into your body, and you want to explode out. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be high, so come out and hit me here, in back. This is going to be mid, 
and then this is going to be low. Now we're, all, we're only going to work the right arm here so we don't get a lot of, of uh, slack in the cables. And what I'm going to do is call high, medium, or low. So you ready? Mm -hmm. Low. Good. Medium. Excellent. And he's got to decelerate that, that slack in the cable or I can bring my hand here and just kind of reduce that a little bit. High. Medium. Medium. High. All right, let's go left, low. Left, high. Left, mid. Left, mid. Left, high. Right, low. Left, high. Right, high. Left, mid. Right, mid. Good. So I add a little bit of resistance here. Takes away from some of that slack you get built up in the cables. How you feeling? Good. A little bit of a workout? Yep, yep, good fine. reaction time. He's got great reaction. That's going to make them think right when that snap comes up to where they are going to go. They got to go low, they got to go mid, high, even you can throw in some cross action, right across, uh, left across, anything you want to do. Last but not least, we're going to crank up the, uh, the old GTS, put the overhead press bar in there, and I'll just have that launched in. You got to throw it to me. I want to test my skills. Excellent. All right. Pop on this overhead press bar, one of my favorite accessories. And how sweet is it that we get to have a functional football sports specific workout in the outdoors right next to a football field. This is, this is, that's the specificity of it all. All right, so same thing here. I got them up pretty high. You okay with this? Yeah. All right, I might bring them down a notch, but what I'm going to do is unfortunately he's got to be pre-positioned in that, in that eccentric loaded position. So he's going to be here. And what I'm going to do is just stick with this one plane and he's going to watch for the corner of his eye for this ball to move and then he goes. Good. Excellent. <laughs> so you can toy around. Now what I'm going to have him do is just stick where he is. I don't want to change the position while he's on it. But I would, if I had my choice here, I would have him in a lo little lower incline so that he could press off and then have that plyometric aspect of decelerating down and having that awareness of where his hand is in space. Let's try one again. This one's going to be tough because he's at a tie angle. I'm going to ha have him just do single arm. <laughs> you up for this? Let's do this. It's double arm concentric, single arm eccentric. So he's going to go up when he sees this ball move to the side of his, side of his head and then he's going to decelerate down with the right arm. Ready? There you go. I'm getting a little training here too. Last one. Good, I almost drew him off sides. Nice, good job. So go ahead and stand up. When you have somebody in this position, you can see it gets maybe a little bit of wobbly. Have them sit down on the glide board just for a moment to let the blood return to where it should be. So that's gravity football, kind of going after one specific aspect of the sport, blocking, coming from the three-point stance going all the way up to the upper body where you're blocking with your arms to get that uh, offensive lineman off beat. Hope this helps with your training and we'll see you next month.